Okay, so I ain't a sailor. I'm just a deckhand on a ferry boat anyhow, so who cares if I ain't nautical? What's the matter, Joey? Lonesome down there on deck? Oh, me? Yeah. How can I be lonesome? It's 3 a.m., there ain't a, a soul on board except you and me and the captain, but why should I be lonesome? <laughs> I got life preservers to talk to. There's a couple of chains that ain't doing nothing either. I'm having a wonderful day. Hey... What's the matter, Joey? Danny, quick. Come down here on deck fast. Okay, okay, I'm coming. How do you like that? You sound like you just stumbled on a million bucks. What's the matter? Holy mackerel. That's a body, Danny. A dead body. I looked when you was coming down. I guess you wanted something to happen on this run, Joey. But you certainly didn't want this. Oh, no more than that guy wanted it. Hey, I wonder how it got here. When's the last time you passed this part of deck? Why, well, I, I ain't been here at all tonight till just now. And it could have been for hours. Uh, what do you see, Danny? What? Nothing we didn't know. He's dead. Probably been shot. Well, we got a report to give the cops when we pull in. Hey, he's wearing a double-breasted blue suit. That's brand new, I'd say, wouldn't you, Danny? Yeah. And his black shoes are new, too. And that shirt and that blue tie. All brand new. Yeah. <laughs> Now, what would anybody expecting to be killed wear a brand new outfit for? Maybe he wasn't expecting to be killed. Well, maybe. Hey, take a look at those socks he's wearing. Oh, what's the matter, Danny? The stiff got you so you forgot your talk? You said, hey, you meant ahoy, didn't you? What's the difference? This corpse is wearing brown woolen socks, argyle socks. The kind your wife knits for you if she can knit, which mine can't. So what? So he's wearing brown argyle socks. So you don't wear brown socks with a blue suit? Oh, so he wasn't a dude. Well, what do you figure? Me? Yeah, you. Not figuring anything. That's for the homicide department. The district attorney and the DEA's friend, Philo Vance, to do. seen everything you wanted to in the morgue, haven't we, Vance? Yes, I suppose so, Markham. Let's get out of here. All right. You've examined the body and the man's clothes, Vance. What do you make of the situation? I'm not sure yet. I believe the man was killed by somebody who thought we could never identify his victim, though. In other words, the suit, the shoes, the tie, and the shirt were purchased so that the original clothes belonging to the dead man could be destroyed. And identification by that means made impossible. Now, what about the socks, Vance? Could be the murderer forgot to buy new socks and that the ones the victim was wearing were his own. That's fine. That gives us a lot to go on. It gives us a great deal. Mm -hmm. For instance, I'll tell you this. The dead man habitually wore tweeds, scotch grain shoes, woolen ties. And I think I know where to pick up his trail. Vance, you're making all of this up. Nobody has been reported missing in this town that even remotely resembles the individual you described. I think the murderer knew nobody would report his victim missing. Here we go again. Certainly looks that way, doesn't it? Let me it? understand something. Yes? You built the clothes the dead man wore, the tweeds, the woolen tie, merely from the fact that he wore woolen socks. Now, let me point oh, but out... But I the... didn't mark them. You didn't? No. Did you notice the tie clasp that was on the blue silk tie he was wearing? Yes. And except for the fact that it was about to slip off the tie, I noticed nothing unusual about it. It's an ordinary clip. Could be bought in any of a thousand stores. But it was about to slip off the silk tie. Now, what does that mean? That the victim almost lost his tie clasp. How do I know what it means? I think it means that the dead man usually wore woolen ties. They spread the clasp. Consequently, it couldn't hold a silk tie securely. Oh, 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 I see. I'll grant you a combination of woolen tie and woolen socks would mean tweeds and possibly scotch grain shoes. But what's your clue to his identity? Did you look on the inside of the socks, Markham? No. I did. And I found something on the inside of the socks that will take me directly to the inside of this case. Okay. <laughs> 
All right, Eddie. Hold it. It's tough work, isn't it? Oh, they never told me this in dramatic school, Mr. Starr. <laughs> don't care if I put this sword down. It's heavy. Oh, we can rest for a while, if that's what you mean. That's what I mean, all right. You know, it's just my luck that after I knock myself out learning this part... John Stanley will come back. Oh, that's possible, but I doubt it. Well, you never know. He's always been threatening to leave show business. And this time, he's done it, I guess. I hope so. All this rehearsing for nothing, if he hasn't. Uh, you ready to start again? Yeah, sure. Good. But uh, why couldn't we have been putting on something by Noel Coward instead of this big Roman tragedy? Huh? Then all I'd have to learn would be to drink tea. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this sword business just isn't for me. <laughs> all right, I'm ready, Mr. Stanley. All right, here we go. All the men... Order of my home, may the gods guide all my sword. Call on your gods, fool. It is on my arm that you... Oh, go on, Eddie. What's the matter? Do you forget your lion? Uh, it's all that noise out of the stage door. Well, I'll soon find out. Quite a racket. Mike? Mike? Where is that doorman? Now, Mr. Starr, I'm sorry. Indeed I am, but this gentleman insists on... On seeing the owner of this company. Would that be you, Mr. Starr? That is right. May I talk to you alone? I'm Philo Vance. Uh, yes, I guess so, Vance. Okay, Eddie, relax somewhere. Mike, will run back to the door. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Starr. Hello, Vance. I've heard about you, of course. That's very flattering. Well, what do you want with me? Thinking of going in for dramatics? Hardly. What male member of your company is missing? Missing? You know, not here anymore, can't be found. Missing. Oh, missing. Yes. Oh. Um, mm. well, well, that would be uh, John Stanley. I imagine he quit show business. Always said he wanted to. Tall man, well-built, chestnut hair, wore tweed suits. Yes, that would be Stanley. He's been murdered. You don't say. I could have sworn I did. Is that the man found on the ferry boats dressed in brand new clothes? Yes. It hasn't been in the newspapers, Mr. Starr. Hasn't it? No. Uh, well, I, I, I must have heard it on the radio. Uh, what made you think he might belong to this company, Vance? In other words, what brought you here? I'll keep that to myself. In other words, mind your own business. I'd like to. But you remember, you interrupted me. I was just teaching a young fellow Stanley's lines and the action of the play. Mr. Starr, somebody went to a great deal of trouble to prevent our identifying the victim. So? I have no doubt that Stanley's murderer intended to throw him off the ferry and into the water. But he found he couldn't without being seen. Uh, go ahead, Vance. I once played a private investigator like you in a play. Only, I did it better. Oh, of course. More conviction. Oh, your last speech, for instance. I have no doubt that Stanley's murderer intended to throw him off the ferry. You see what I mean? Hmm. Who would want to? Oh. Mr. Starr, the murderer of John Stanley wanted two things. He wanted to make it difficult for anybody to identify the dead man, and he wanted to avoid being caught. Oh, why tell that to me? Oh, you might pass the word along. Oh? I want the killer to be a little bit nervous. And he will be when he finds out what I know. <laughs> All right, Vance. I'll see the people in show business know what a genius you are. Do that. And Star. Yes. Don't forget what I said. About spreading the word around? About wanting the killer to be nervous. Uh, oh, allow me, Mr. Starr. You dropped your cigarette. Coming. I'm Marla Martin. That's my stage name. May I come in? Thank you. Oh. Thank you very much. So kind well, of you. Won't you <sighs> sit down, Miss... Martin, that's my stage name, yeah. Marla Martin. I'd like to sit here on this red chair, may I? Oh, bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're wondering who I am and why I'm here, aren't you, Mr. Martin? Well, Vance? yes, Do you I... mind if I knit? I always knit, even when I talk. I talk much better when I knit. You'd be surprised how much better. It would really take good. quite a shock to surprise me more than I am Oh, you mustn't moment. mind me. I'm Marla Martin. That's, that's your stage, stage name, name yes. yes. Why did you come here, Miss Martin? From where? Here, to my apartment. I'm Philo Vance. Oh, you how came nice. here, don't you remember? Oh, so I did. Oh, no, I'm afraid I must be going. Thank you. Wait a moment. Don't scream at me, Mr. Vance. I came to do you a favor. You see, I was backstage when you were talking to Roger Starr today at the theater. I'm in the play. I play a Roman handmaiden. John got me the job. John here, Stanley? John. Of course. What other John would get me a job? He liked me, Mr. Vance, and I liked him. Now he's dead. Yes, he is, and Poor I want John. to find out who killed him. Well, that's what I came up to tell you, but you screamed oh. at me, and now I don't know whether to tell you or not. Do you see? Maybe the next time you won't scream at somebody... Miss Martin, stop it. You. What? Stop it at once. My knitting? You want me to stop knitting? Stop I that can't. babbling. Now, what do you know about John Stanley's death? I know who killed him. Who? 
first say you're sorry you screamed at me. Who killed John Stanley? You're doing it again. Oh, Ryan, you look like such a nice man. You have such nice red chairs. Red is my favorite color. I'll find you an Indian. Thanks. Now, who is it that you think killed him? Think? Yes, think. I don't know. I don't think I know. It was Milton Talbot, of course. Do you know where I could get a red Milton chair like Talbot. this? It's lovely. I told you what you wanted to know. We were talking about this chair. Who is like Milton it. Talbot? He's the editor of Talbot's Tidbits. It's a newspaper. What is? Oh, yes. It prints everything about everybody in show business. What size socks do you wear, Mr. Vance? If you don't scream at me, I'll knit you a pair I'm of I'm sorry socks. about the screaming, Miss Martin. Socks. Do you know why Talbot killed Stanley? I don't know everything, Mr. Vance. Only that Talbot did it. Of course, they had a great big quarrel, and Talbot said he was going to do What it. was the quarrel about? Money. What do men generally quarrel about? Money, you know. Money or women? Of course. What was the connection between Talbot and. Wait a minute. Huh? I know that paper he puts out. He runs oh. a lot of scandal, which performers can keep out of print if they take an advertisement in his paper. Uh, mm. You still haven't told me what size socks you wear. So How the dead man and Talbot had an argument, eh? Perhaps Mr. Stanley found out something about the blackmailing publisher of Talbot's tidbits. You look like about a size nine, I think. Thank you for coming here, Miss Martin. Oh? I'm going to see Mr. Talbot. I'm going to find out if he took time out from putting items in his paper to put a bullet in John Stanley's heart. Oh. Talbot speaking. This is Dolores Williams. You call me? Oh, yes. Yes, I did. Well, I just wondered... Let me see now, Miss Williams. Uh, you have a film contract, haven't you? Why, yes. I leave for the coast in a month. Maybe. What do you mean, maybe? Let me read you a story I'm publishing in the next issue of my paper. Well, now... Dolores Williams has been signed by Acme Studio for the mother role in their new production, So High the Tide. Yes. Acme believes Miss Williams is the typical American mother and will start an extensive campaign on her when she arrives in California next month. Oh, that's very nice of you to print that, Mr. Talbot. The second paragraph is much nicer. Well, that's... For me. Oh. It says, wonder if Acme knows that Miss Williams is really Mrs. Bessie Doyle. <gasps> who deserted her husband and three children when they were infants and is still wanted on a charge of shoplifting in her native city. How, how did you find out about that? It's my business to find out things, Miss Williams. Now, it's very possible my paper would be so crowded by advertisements that the second paragraph doesn't get in. Well, I haven't any money. And isn't this blackmail? Is it? Well, it certainly is. What have I asked you for? Oh, Nothing. How much is a full-page ad? I don't know if I want an ad from you. Oh, please, Mr. Talbot, I'll get the money somewhere. You've got to take it. Wait a minute, Miss Williams. Who are you? My name is Vance. There was nobody in your outer office, so I came right in. I hope I'm not intruding. Be right with you. Certainly. Miss Williams? Yes? I'll call you back. You're sure you want to put an ad in my paper? You know I do. I'll be speaking to you. Goodbye. Bye. Well, Vance? You talk quite loud, Talbot. I heard most of your conversation with that Miss Williams. People just beg to put ads in my paper. I don't know why. Oh, yes, you do. If I weren't working on a murder case, I'd blast that racket of yours wide open. You'd what? And don't leave papers like that little notation on Roger Starr lying around on your desk. Very revealing. Are you going to blast my racket, huh? Who are you going to get to help you, I don't need any help to break your racket or you. Oh, people do talk. I'm glad you did that. It's illegal to start a fight. This is self-defense and a great pleasure. Put that in your newspaper, Talbot. While you're at it, why don't you insert an advertisement under Help Wanted? Just those two words, Help Wanted. Sign it with your name. This is District Attorney Markham. The Argyle murder case opened with the finding of the body of a man dressed in brand new clothing, with the exception of a pair of Argyle socks. Vance, with only this meager crew to work on, has identified the body and has managed to interview three people. Roger Starr, owner and featured performer in the theater company, Lila Martin, an actress, and Milton Talbot, publisher of a theatrical newspaper. Vance is now in my office, and we are... The... 
Marco. All right, Markham, I'll tell you. Thanks, Vance. In as much as you're certain that the Argyle socks John Stanley was wearing put you on the trail of his murderer, I think I'm entitled to know. It's relatively simple. For you, you mean? We'll see what you think after I explain. All right. As you know, I'm working on the assumption that Stanley's clothing was taken from him. Yes. That he was garbed in brand new clothing by his killer. The killer intended to throw the body from the ferry, but found he couldn't. So he let it lie on the boat to be found. I go along with that. Good. Now, when the murderer bought the new clothes, he forgot to buy socks. And he thought nothing of leaving Stanley's own socks on the body, believing they couldn't be traced. But you traced them? No. What do you mean, no? You told me the socks sent you to the theater where that Roger Starr company was rehearsing a Roman play. That I did, but it wasn't the socks themselves. It wasn't? It was a smear of makeup I found inside the socks. Makeup inside a pair of socks? Yes. Well, what would makeup be doing inside a pair of socks? My answer to that seemed logical. If the dead man were an actor, and if he were appearing in a play that called for bare legs, like a Greek or Roman drama, he'd have makeup on his legs. Oh. There was only one such drama in town, Roger Starr's production. You went there and found John Stanley was missing. I see now. I'm glad. And there's something I'd like to see. And that is? My way clear to a solution of this case. I refuse to believe you have no idea who killed Stanley. I refuse to believe I can't prove my idea. And so I will. When? That is something only the murderer can tell you. The murderer? The Stanley killing was for profit, Markham. But his slayer is going to give himself away. you sent for me, Mr. Talbot. John always talked about you and I wanted to meet you. And isn't it funny that now that he's dead, here I am in your office? You don't mind if I need I always I don't admit, mind I if you do to. anything, provided you stop talking. Oh, I've got to talk. If a person has something to say, a person has to talk. Else, how would anybody know what it is she has to say? I used to hear you and John talking all the time. All, all right, time. all right. Now, look, Lila. Lila Martin. It's my stage name. It's Lila. Lila, listen to him. But I am listening. All right. You know that John and I had a business arrangement. Of course I know. You always touch wood when you're talking business like yes, that. Yes, yes, it's That's a habit. very strange. Uh, you aren't as eccentric as you seem, are you? Me? I don't think I'm eccentric. Other people do, but I'm not responsible for them. Why don't you keep talking, Talbot? Well, that's better. Lila, you and that wacky act you put on are accepted in a lot of places I can't get to. You can get me a lot of information, like your friend John Stanley used to do. I pay for information. Do you understand? Enough to keep listening. That's all there is. Get me some dope on stage, people, if they won't want to see published, and I'll see that... There you are, Talbot. What, what is this? Talbot, I'm going to kill you. Oh, no, wait a minute. I'm Dolores Williams. You have a story about me. I can't afford to take the ad we talked about, and I can't afford to have you print the story. So I'm going to kill you. The woman with the gun says she's going to kill you, Mr. Talbot. I don't think she will. Look, Miss Williams, put down that gun. Let's be reasonable. Reasonable? There's only one kind of reason you understand, and it's this. <laughs> I knocked her arm up. Hold it, Talbot. No, you don't. She's still got the gun. Well, pretty good slugging with my handbag, don't you think, Talbot? I guess I rate an assist. Yes, yes you certainly do. When she comes to, I'll, I'll cart her out of here. Thanks for your help. Uh-huh. Lila, we ought to understand each other better. You know John Stanley was tired of you. Of course. I just wanted to make sure. Now, where were we? In the middle of a business proposition. No, that's right. I'm going to give you a phone number. It's my pencil. I'll write it down. I've got a pencil. I want my own, my gold pencil. There's my gold pencil. I've got to have my pencil. Now you're talking like me. There's a gold pencil underneath that letter. Oh, yes, thanks. Got to have it when I write something that has to do with my business. Now, here's the phone number. Use it when you hear anything I can print. Okay. And tell me something. When are you faking? When you're talking normally like now? Or when you're babbling? <laughs> to tell you the truth, Tal, but I've been doing that babbling act so long, I don't know which is the real me. Now, look here, Mr. Vance. The last time you were backstage here talking to Mr. Starr, there was trouble. Maybe you better go away. I will, Mike, but I'm expecting a friend of mine to meet me here, Mr. Markham. Meet him outside. Mr. Starr says if you got here again, I should throw you out. Now, Mike, please. He said get the stage hands to help me. That, of course, is different. What's I... the problem, Mike? No problem that you can solve, my friend. Say, I remember you. Really? You were rehearsing a duel with Mr. Starr when I was here last. That's right. You were taking John Stanley's place. So? So, you must have known Stanley. I still say so. So, if you wanted his job badly enough... What? Uh, wait a minute. He didn't kill John Stanley. Eddie here had a job with the company. He's always had it. 
He comes to Mr. Starr's hometown. Oh, he does, eh, Mike? Sure. Eddie. Yeah? I've got some information on Mr. Starr. Some trouble he got in back home. So? What year was that? That was a long time ago. How did you find out? I saw a memorandum on the desk of a man named Talbot when I went to see him. I imagine John Stanley knew about Mr. Starr's trouble. I made the mistake of telling Stanley one night. Oh, and... Is that Francis' voice I hear out there, Mike? Uh, yes, Mr. Starr. Get him out of here. I don't want him out of here. Get him out. out. Mr. Vance. I'm sorry, but I'm not ready to leave yet. I have... Joey! Yeah. Me. Frankie! Yeah. Sam! Uh -oh. Mr. Starr, I want the guy thrown out. Come on, Vance. You better move. Reinforcements arriving, eh? Well, I still think Okay, I'm fellas, rush it. Stop it. Hey, open the door, Frankie. Stop that, butch. Stop it. This isn't the subway. Subway or no subway, this is where you get off. Oh. oh. Nothing like leaving a place of your own free will, is there, Frank? <laughs> Hello, Markham. You arrived just in time to be too late. The two of us might have given the five of them a little action. Only five of them? Hmm. Well, let's go back in, eh? Uh, it's a luxury I can't afford right now. Markham, I want you to have Roger Starr, owner of this company, in my apartment in an hour. Uh-oh. It sounds like we're nearing the end of this case. I'll do it, Vance, but why? Because he had a motive for killing John Stanley. So did a man named Talbot I'd like you to have there, too. And likewise, a girl named Lila Martin. That's her stage name. That shouldn't be too much trouble. The showdown, Vance? I think so. If you can get all three to show up. While we're waiting for Mr. Vance to get here, I think I'll sit in the same chair I sat in when I was here before. The red one all right with you, Mr. Starr? Well, certainly, Lila. Well, then get up. You're sitting in it. Oh, I want a net. I always sit when I'm sitting around. and have Shut nothing that out, Lila. Losing your temper, Delvin. Just my patience, Markham. What's the big idea of getting us three here? I'm sure Vance will... Vance will explain everything now that he is here. About time. Mr. Vance, if you'll only tell me what size socks you wear, I'll Vance, have to what's going on here? I'm sorry I kept you waiting. I had to stop at a stationery store. I have in my hand three pads and three sets of pencils. What are we going to do, play school? Yes, but I'm the only one who's going to learn anything. Is that so? One set of pencils and a pad for you, Miss Martin. Lila Martin, it's, it's your Lila. stage. Please. Please. One set of pencils and a pad for you, Mr. Starr. I suppose I should say thank you. Perhaps I'll have occasion to thank you. Really? Your set, Mr. Talbot? Just what I always want. A pad and three pencils, each of a different color. Gee, what do we do with these? Each of you take your green pencil and write the word green on the pad. Now go on, do it. Oh, brother. G R. Uh, to e yourself, please. E now what? The next pencil is the red one. Take it and write the word red on the pad. Now do the same thing with the black pencil, writing the word black. <sighs> What's this going to prove, Vance? You'll see, Markham. All ready? Yes. Of course. Good. Your pad, Miss Martin. Oh, yes, here. Green, red, black. Yours, Mr. Talbot? Here. Green, red, black. Mr. Starr? Here you are. Thank you. Green, red, black. Take a look at these three slips, Markham. I am looking. Everyone seemed to write what you told them to. Except Mr. Starr. Well, what's going on here? I wrote green, red, black, didn't I? Certainly, but you used the wrong pencil. The blup. You used the black pencil to write green and reversed the other two also. Oh, that's terrible, isn't it? What's it supposed to prove? Nothing very much. Just that you killed John Stanley. <laughs> Please, Vance. Very well. You have a confession from Roger Starr, but you want to know how I discovered he was the killer from that red, green, and black test. That is it exactly. <laughs> well, let's go back to the Argyle socks, Mark. All right. The brown Argyle socks that were on the legs of the dead John Stanley. I'm back to them. I told you that the killer, in reclothing the body, had forgotten to buy socks. Yes. A simple error of which he thought nothing. But he left the corpse wearing a blue outfit, suit and tie, and brown socks with black shoes. I'm beginning to understand that. You're beginning to understand correctly, too. Good. Roger Starr saw nothing wrong in leaving Stanley's own socks on the body because he didn't know they were brown. Uh-huh. He was colorblind, as my test proved. You knew the murderer had to be colorblind, or he'd never have left so obvious a clue that the dead body had been reclothed. Exactly. When Starr couldn't tell what color pencil he had in his hand, I knew he was colorblind. Mm -hmm. I knew his motive, of course desire to keep John Stanley from selling information about his past to Talbot. He didn't know Stanley had already told the blackmailing editor. Against whom I have already prepared an indictment. Good. Well, it'll be the end of this blackmailing paper, believe me, Vance. Just as this is the end of the Argyle murder case, Markham.